and welcome to Orion Today. I'm Joe Johnson, and once again, I am joined by Kim Urbanowski. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Thank you. You made it much. out in this uh, uh, snowy day. It's not that far of a drive for me, but it still wasn't <laughs> that much fun. So, yeah, that kind of just happened out of nowhere, it feels it like. It did, yeah. I, I think they were predicting sort of a light dusting, and when nope. I stepped outside today, it looked like there was a good four to six inches yeah. on the ground. So, yeah, caught us by surprise. It sure did. Yeah. So, obviously, the top story this week is our beloved Detroit yes. Lions. Did you watch the game on uh, Sunday? Absolutely. We watched a little bit of the that other game before that uh, and then watched the Lions game. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I know we always joke, like I joke, football's not my thing. Wink, wink. I actually do <laughs> know about football and I do watch it. So we, um, we were pretty excited to watch it as a family. I went to a big uh, party at a hall. It was a fundraiser for the Fraternal Order of Police. And so there were raffles and squares yeah. and all sorts of stuff. And seeing the game with a large group of people, there had to have been 50 to 60 people there. And that first half, yes, like oh I felt God. like I was hyperventilating. Like I was breathing heavy. My heart was racing. Every yeah. touchdown, we were on our feet, just jumping up mm -hmm. and screaming and hugging and high-fiving. And we thought, man, we're 30 minutes away from the Super Bowl. Yeah. And then the second half of that what game happens? was a completely different story. And you can't put your finger on any one thing because it seemed like everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Well, it's two teams <laughs> fighting for the same thing. I mean, yeah. let's let's be real. It's not like they were going to not let it, you know, not do something to prevent us from winning. And I mean, honestly, for in my opinion, to getting that far and I was just saying this to you earlier, it's been since what 1957 since the they were in that. Championship year, that's pretty and that's Super Bowl. Yeah. A long time ago. I mean, to for 3 short years to get them to this point. Yeah. I mean, like I'm probably going to end up watching football next year if it stays this interesting and exciting. Well, I think it will. You know, I, I've said this and I've seen the uh, experts on social media say this, that, you know, we've went through periods where the late 80s Pistons, like they would yes. make it to the semifinals and then get beat and yep. they came back stronger yeah. and they knew what they had to do to win and eventually they won back-to-back -back titles. Yeah. Red Wings did the same thing. They yes, would they always, they'd made the playoffs and then they would always get knocked out. And then when they finally got over that hump, they became a dynasty. So, you know, I think uh, sometimes with, with that is that if we had gone all the way and like, it would have been so much all at one time. Yeah. You know, and then and then what? You then what? You got to maintain that. You got to <laughs> like I feel like it's okay to get like little steps to there. Yeah. It keeps us all excited. It keeps them hungry. I think yeah. it's cool. We have some really young players on that right. squad, rookies, and they got a taste of it in their first year. They're yeah. going to want to go back and so they're going to have that fire yeah. so i think next season you know maybe little tweaks here and there but mm -hmm. how much tweaking do you need because they the lions got 12 wins on the right. regular season 13 if you count that dallas game <laughs> and uh so you know it was a great season uh, our was. quarterback had a great season yeah I, I, on sports talk radio i hear people calling in griping and complaining and i'm like you're a Lions fan. We've been miserable for such a long time. Enjoy, Enjoy the this. season. Bask like, in this. It. Absolutely. So um, I'm grateful. Thank you, Lions, yes. for a great season. It was a lot of fun cheering and yelling with family. And yeah. uh, it was it was it created memories. And, and uh, yeah, I'm did. so grateful. And I did manage to make one regular season game. It was the Monday night game against the Raiders. That was a lot of fun. Um, so it was it was a memorable year, and yeah. uh, I think we can expect this. That same old Lions SOL that's behind us mm -hmm. now. You can't say that anymore. Yeah. And hopefully we'll have these expectations every every season. Let's do it. So yeah. <laughs> uh, what else is going on? Um, the Oscars. The yeah. uh, the nominees were announced uh, mm -hmm. last week, Tuesday I think it was. Um, did you catch uh, the announcements? The, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I don't t watch them as a as a rule, but I see, you know, the the talk about it on social media and stuff. Yeah. And of course, the the big thing is how Margot Robbie and Greta Gerwig didn't get nominated snub, yeah. for for Barbie, but um, uh, Ryan Gosling did, which yeah. kind of like proves the point. Which I don't know. I it, well, I think it's just the way things worked out. One of the problems that caused this to happen is the fact that the Academy 
is now back up to 10 Best Picture nominees, but only five directors and five acting categories. Mm -hmm. So there are going to be five worthy candidates who yeah. got left off. Um, people are talking about uh, Leo DiCaprio in, in uh, Flower Moon. Uh, he got left off of a Best Actor nod, and they said if they would have added one more nominee, he would have gotten it. Right. So because there's 10 Best Picture nominees, there's five directors left out in the right. cold, and Greta Gerwig did happen to be one of them. Now, even though Barbie was you know, a phenomenon and a, a, just a huge box office moneymaker uh, over this past year, does anyone really think that it has a shot at Best Picture? Well, the other thing, too, is like <laughs> comedies don't normally have a shot at Best Picture. I mean, right. it's not really the genre of picture that, that does well at the Oscars anyway. Yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, so. years ago when Marissa Tomei won uh, Best Actress for My Cousin Vinny, oh. people thought it was a mistake. They thought that Jack Palance read the wrong name. Wow. Because she got recognized for a comedic role, right. people were like, how did this happen? And, yeah, so the Academy has a history of not recognizing the light popular right. movies right when i when i see the list of nominees i'm like i don't know half these movies i don't I know, know half these actors it's always like you know they to be eligible for an academy award you have to be seen in the theater and so at the end of 2023 they're showing these films in L la and new york <coughs> and people else, like yeah. us in you know midwest america are like what are these i've right. never seen these right and then sometimes when I get around to seeing him, I was like, eh. yeah. Like, have you seen Oppenheimer? I haven't seen Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer is pretty much the front runner. More yeah. than likely, it's going to win Best Picture. Uh, Killian Murphy probably will win Best Actor. I sat down to watch it, you know, s streaming on TV, and I was like, eh. Right. It wasn't all that great, in my opinion. Um, but those are the types of movies that traditionally. Sure, those sweeping big stories, and they're yeah. they're. They always seem very dramatic to me, and I mean, I don't know. I it I haven't seen Barbie yet either, but yeah. Um, but I'm not getting out to the theater, but you know, I always like to watch it from home. But <laughs> I don't know. I, I some of those other movies that have won Best Oscars, it, I just well, I liked La La Land, but oh yeah. And that got that it cool. got beat though. Remember it? Oh, that's they, right. They, they announced they were oh, one best right. picture, and then it was a mistake, was and they mistake. got beat by a movie called Moonlight that nobody yeah. talks about today. Right. I will say this. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Some people might agree with me. Some people might think I'm crazy, but I finally saw a movie this past weekend that came out in 2023. I only just now got around to seeing it, and in my opinion, it's the best movie of the year, and that is called Godzilla minus one. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard about this movie? Yeah, wasn't it? It was just at the theater because when yeah. I was looking to go to a movie at, at AMC, I was like, what is this? Yeah, so it's a Japanese produced film and a lot of people are saying that Japan um, messed up by not entering it in best foreign language film. Um, I went to see it and it's, they re-released it in black and white, which is kind of cool, so I yeah. went to go see it in black and white. And it's a fantastic World War II picture. It's set like in 1945. It just happens to have Godzilla, Godzilla in, it. in it. Now, here's the interesting <laughs> thing. Godzilla only has about nine minutes of screen time, so they have to fill the rest of the movie. And it's the most compelling war story that's so along the lines of Dunkirk or you know any, any Oscar-dominated yeah. war movie. It's that good between the Godzilla appearances. No way. So mark my words. No if you way. get a chance to see it, you out there, check out Godzilla Minus One, and you will say he was right. Ah. Quite possibly the best movie of the year but, and one of the best movies I've seen maybe in the past decade. Come on. Yes. I am oh, being okay. completely All right. serious. I'm going to watch it. I'll right. have to watch it. Not streaming on the, on yet, it's still in theaters, but hopefully it'll huh. stream and be released on Kid, video like, soon. Could I take a kid with me? Like yes, oh, by far. Yeah. Oh, good, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, ah, yeah. Well, maybe that's what I'll we'll do this weekend. <laughs> uh, the other big news is uh, next week kicks off uh, ONTV's week-long food drive, benefiting Oxford Orion Fish. Yes. We've been gearing up for it. We're producing videos. Uh, over the past several years, pretty much since COVID, uh, we went from a one-day yeah. collection event 
to a week-long event where we focus mostly on monetary donations. Um, and then we've been very, very successful. Yes. And last year we, we passed our expectations. So uh, we're gearing up for that. Um, you can visit orionontv.org uh, for donation information. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at last year's uh, new story that we put together on ONTV's Food Drive. And when we come back, we'll have some representatives from Fish right here on the set with us. So take a look at this piece from last year's Food Drive. On Monday, February 6, ONTV kicked off its week-long food drive benefiting the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry. Things got off to a rocky start when it was discovered that a water pipe burst at the Orient Center on Sunday, February 5th, flooding the offices of the Senior Center in Parks and Rec. Luckily, ONTV just had to deal with some damp carpets, and the food drive went on as planned. Now in its 13th year, the ONTV staff went live on the air throughout the week and created new content for viewers to enjoy. The community was asked to donate online or drop off food at the Orient Center. As the food drive came to an end on Friday, it was announced that more than $8,000 was raised during the week. Much of that came from generous sponsors in the business community. After the food drive came to an end, ONTV received another substantial donation. Bill and Pam Vulcan of Madison Heights Plumbing and Heating Supply dropped off a check for $5,000, bringing the 2023 total to over $13,000, and an estimated 2,000 pounds of food was delivered to the food pantry. Well, 2023, the 13th annual food drive for fish, um, always an exciting time for Orient Neighborhood Television. Our staff all come together at, at one time. We really kind of call it this our Super Bowl. We use all the technology um, at our fingertips that we have available to use it for a good cause to help uh, the food pantry try to bridge that gap from the holiday season into uh, the spring season. And our goal this year was $5,000. And uh, we had a lot of help from our community sponsors, our local businesses and corporations. Over 30 businesses came out to help uh, the food drive this year and fish with a minimum of $100 donation, which is fabulous. We can't thank our sponsors enough for the support they gave fish. 100% of all donations go right to the food pantry. Uh, this cash is so needed at this time with the, uh, the inflationary uh, uh, pressures put on families in their food bills. On Thursday, February 9th, representatives of North Oakland VFW Post 334 arrived at the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry to present a check for $1,200. Each year at this time, the VFW takes part in the food pantry's Adopt a Shelf program to make sure that the tomato sauce shelves are stocked throughout the year. Their business is, is booming, and with that, the reason it's booming is everybody at home sees an impact every time they go groceries what used to be a dollar is now five dollars and that's putting a lot of people out in the risk range now so having this organization here support the orient oxford metamora in here in north oakland that uh it's, it's, it's just a gem to have out in this area here it surely is and our money cannot be better used than going out and supporting the community this way because there's a lot of veterans that come through the doors here to pick up some food for the month. When you see us on the streets uh, uh, offering everybody a poppy, uh, those donations that come in help support this community service that we do. Uh, we can uh, use that money to help veterans and their, in their, in the spouses and their children and, and the community too. So. Uh, that, that money is uh, set aside through the poppy program that we do offer and uh, that's how we collect the monies to, to purchase the items that we do sponsor on the shelves. It's amazing to have you know this lump sum of money. Our clients are, are increasing in number, we get more calls, so this all helps you know tremendously for us to have food on the shelves to help those families in need. Even before the food drive began, food was already arriving at the ONTV offices at the Orient Center. Troop 77493, made up of daisies and brownies, dropped off a huge load of canned goods and non-perishable items. And we just wanted to be involved in our community um, because Girl Scouts are friendly and helpful and 
courteous and kind, which is part of our law. <laughs> um, so we just wanted to collect cans of and boxes of food for our community. Um, we made a poster, the girls made a poster, and we just posted on Facebook and went around and did porch pickups. And um, the girls had a great time helping with their community. And coming up, well, right now is cookie season, so you'll be starting to see us out very soon out in your lo our local grocery stores and other stores. Throughout the week, the community was encouraged to help fill the van, which was parked in front of the ONTV entrance. On Friday, representatives of FISH arrived to collect the food donations and deliver them to the food pantry. During the holiday, everyone has that giving spirit, and we bring in a lot of, a lot of um, donations. And then it kind of ta tapers off in the winter months until Postal Food Drive, which I, I believe is in May 13th this year. So this helps bridge that gap, keeps our shelves full, gives us you know, money to purchase things that are you know, dwindling. So yeah, it, it's a great to fill that gap. We thank you so much for bringing awareness to the pantry, continued awareness, bringing in new people, you know, fan finding out what we do. Not only people who maybe need our services or know someone who could use our help, but also to come and, you know, maybe adopt a shelf or, you know, give us a, you know, a donation, of, you know, so that they can help others too. So we thank you so much for that awareness and um, making us a priority. Yeah community coming out the way they have, we're not surprised. Uh, Orion and Oxford uh, OCTV, Oxford Community Television, has joined us uh, this year and has spread the food drive north uh, up Lapeer Road, so it's growing to uh, incorporate uh, a lot of the sponsors from uh, Oxford, which came out this year, which was fantastic. So we know when there's a call to action to help those in need around Oxford and Orion, we know the community's going to come out, and uh, we were not disappointed. From the ONTV studio, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. So yeah, last year's food drive was our most successful ever, and we're hoping to top those numbers this year. Joining us now is Sue Black and Ron Wood from Oxford Orient Fish. Welcome to our studio once again. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. <laughs> just so, have to correct you. My name is not Black. Oh, which Hackstock? Oh, I'm Sue sorry. Sue Black is our pa pantry coordinator. That's who okay. Is on I'm your team. That's, that's okay. Uh -huh. That's all right. <laughs> I just don't want her to think, "Oh, there's another me." <laughs> <laughs> so let's start off with a uh, little bit of a history in, uh, of uh, Oxford Orion Fish. When? How long has this organization been serving the community? 51 years. Wow. 51 years. That's an awful long time. Now, you used to be in a little building on the north end of Oxford, um, but you moved into this beautiful building you have currently. When, when did that happen? That was within the last, what, October, five, six, seven years? Middle of October, October. 2018. 2018. So we've been there a little over years. Yeah, yeah. How, how has that been working out for you, having that nice uh, central location? Excellent. It's, it's yeah. Couldn't be better. <laughs> there's, uh, there's a number of just internal benefits as well. Being able to move the product from the where our warehouse area to the shelves, it's all on one level before we were up and down the stairs carrying right. things. And as you yeah. get Yo, an wow. older volunteer base, it's, uh, <laughs> it's nice to have that. We're able to move product, to, well, like I said, a lot quicker. We have flatbed uh, carts that we use to move nice. the crates into, into the shopping area. Yeah, and being right off of M24 there, it seems like it's easy access where before that building was on some off roads and I remember going there would be really snowy and kind of mm. hard to get to so it's nice having that easy access right there by uh, trainer. Uh, and it's also a little more centrally located yeah. between yeah. Oxford and Lake Orion. We're much closer to Lake Orion now than we were before. We used to get a few uh, clients that would say it's quite a drive for them to you know come from Southern Orion all the way up to Thomas. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So um, when COVID rolled around, it was kind of interesting because the need for your services surprisingly dropped during COVID because people were receiving the yeah. stimulus checks and things like that. Um, now with dealing with the inflation and stuff, what are your numbers currently? What is the demand currently? Uh, actually in 2023, we had uh, our record high uh, for number of pounds distributed. So we were wow. 
we were a uh, little over 239,000 pounds of food that was distributed. Oh, wow. Our previous high was in 2019 of 203,000. And in 2022, we were at a little over 189,000. So we were up 50,000 pounds of, of food from 2022 to 2023. And so um, it took a little while to get, to get used to you know, supplying that additional food, but uh, yeah. but we've caught up and we're, I think, managing pretty well. Yeah. Wow. Now over the holidays is when a large influx of donation comes in, but I was told that February, March, things tend to get a little light on the shelves. Is that true? Um, normally, that's that's the case. Um, we had a, a pretty good surge the end of uh, December with donations and so um, we have a, a, uh, a fair amount of food currently but at 20,000 pounds a month you, you, you <laughs> it disappears pretty quickly sure. so so when we do get into that February March and then even early April um, I wouldn't say uh, the community forgets about us but it's it's not top of mind like it is during the holidays yeah yeah. And so then in the spring, obviously, there's the big post office food drive, which brings in a lot of, a lot of donations. So that's why we here at Owen TV uh, scheduled our food drive between the holidays mm -hmm. and the post office food drive to kind of help you uh, get to that next major uh, drive that you have. Uh, what, is, what is the number one source of donations? Where does the bulk of your donations come from? Oh. Well, we, schools, uh, churches. Um, well, we, we get supported by uh, um, the different townships and villages. Uh, they give us grants through through the, through the year because mm -hmm. we're helping some of their residents at the food pantry. Um, we get businesses that donate money. We get churches that donate money. We get individuals that donate money. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's really amazing uh, how well the community at whole supports the food pantry. I mean, that enables us to do what we do. Hmm. And your, your team here, um, as you mentioned, that gives us a nice shot uh, in the arm in the middle of uh, wintertime. Hmm. So it's, it's really a community effort, in my opinion. And, and uh, um, I don't know that there's one particular source, but there's a, just a number of sources that, that, that help us financially. Yeah. Now, uh, when, we, when COVID again rolled around, we got away from the one day food drive thing and we went the entire week and we kind of started focusing on cash donations more than the food donations. Now we still do get the food yeah. donations. We try to fill our ON TV truck, uh, but talk about what cash donations allow you to do. Um, it allows us to pick and choose the items that we need. Right. So there's certain, there's certain items that we get a lot of donations. You get your green beans, your corns. We have yeah, thousands of those in stock. Oh but there's, we, we try to offer a, a large variety of different, yeah. uh, different food items. And so if we're running short of canned chicken or we're running short of uh, hamburger helper or we're running short of uh, peanut butter, whatever it may be, enables us to utilize those funds to purchase what we, what we don't get in donations. Because yeah. they're still in demand from the, from the clients that shop. Sure. Right. Speaking of your clients, um, talk about how that works. How do clients come to your attention and then how do they utilize your services? They call. They're aware of that we're here. So they call and they make an appointment and um, they, can, they come in and shop once. So they're allowed to come in every 30 days, but they always have to call and make an appointment. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it's poundage per person or, you know, or per family, per person actually. Uh, and they get that that much poundage of food, mm -hmm. and it's weighed when they come. It's in a, you know just like they're shopping at Meyer. You know everything is. I mean it's pretty much, they pick what, pick and choose what they want, and it's weighed, and they're on their way. Yeah. Wow. Now prior to COVID, uh, there were some criteria that families had to meet, and then I I know that was lifted immediately mm -hmm. after COVID. Are there any criteria today that? a family has to meet to be able to utilize your services? Not really, not anymore. Not like it used to be. It's yeah, a lot different yeah. than it used to be. Yeah. yeah. We kind of still kind of watch and kind of are aware, but um, basically we don't go through all the showing proof of all this stuff. They have to live in Oxford or Orion, Addison Township. They, um, 
<clears throat> and we asked for their driver's license to, you know, kind of prove that they live in the area, but yeah. that's pretty much all we really are after, mm -hmm. taking them on their word, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, and they're pretty good. I can't say they're not. They yeah. know. It's got to be tough, you know, to admit that you need help. Exactly. I mean, it's got to be hard. Exactly. So to make someone come to you for help and have them jump through hoops has got to be very discouraging. So it's yeah, kind of nice. Yeah, it that, is nice. It's working yeah. out very well. Okay. Yeah. Now, you also depend heavily on volunteers. Do you want to talk about how people can volunteer their time to help you out? Yeah, I just call the office and we'll gladly take you know, names and, and tell them what's available, what we do, where we're at, and let them, um, you know, let them pick and choose. They can work in the office, uh, answering the phone, filling appointments, or they can work in the pantry with Ron, stocking shelves, mm -hmm. or being there with, you know, helping the clients at the, you know, uh, do their shopping for the week or whatever. But we are all volunteers. That's very, very yeah. important to us that pe yeah. the community knows that we are, it's all volunteers. None of us get paid. I mean, Ron would be a millionaire if he got <laughs> paid <laughs> all his hours. But no, we are. We're just all volunteers. And it works out very well. Yeah. It's a very good, very wonderful, wonderful organization. Yeah. So that those donations are going on the shelves. On the shelves. That's right. On the shelves. Right. Um, how often do you stock the shelves? Uh, we stock uh, every Tuesday morning and every Thursday morning. So, um, so uh, the Tuesday st stocking is, is it's a larger because we try to staff enough or put enough food on the shelves for two days of shopping because mm -hmm. we have shopping on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And then Thursday, we stock Thursday morning for Thursday and then, and then uh, back come back on Tuesday, we, uh, we stock for what's been taken on, uh, mm -hmm. on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, those are the two stocking days. Kind of going back earlier, and I, I don't want to discourage anybody, but one of the things I mentioned earlier, the efficiency of operating in this new facility so most of all the volunteer, unfortunately, hours are, are pretty much in the in the mornings and in the afternoons. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we have a, a number of dedicated uh, regulars that, that show up uh, every Tuesday. We were we were just there this morning, mm -hmm. uh, stocking the shelves. And uh, one of the other more recent benefits I uh, I want to mention too is uh, Forgotten Harvest has changed their method of distribution, and uh, it's been a huge benefit for us. Um, what they do is they take all their food back to their warehouse, repackage it for each pantry so that they get a similar amount of food, brings it out. So we're getting a lot more food from them. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's the, the, the uh, clients are really appreciative of the additional food that we're yeah. getting from them. That's awesome. What's popular, like what disappears off the shelf quickly and uh, mm -hmm. what needs to be constantly restocked? Um, this time of year, it's... Uh, your soups, your broth, mm -hmm. your chilies, uh, pastas, uh, and uh, um, your, your mac and cheese, stuff that's fairly easy, but uh, it's warm mm -hmm. and hearty to, uh, to fix. Um, pretty, uh, uh, we get, we, surprisingly, um, vegetables, we go through a lot of vegetables, doesn't matter which kind, and uh, canned fruits as well. Mm -hmm. We go through mm -hmm. a lot of canned food yeah. as well. Probably pineapple and mandarin oranges are the two favorite. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only kind of canned fruit we eat in our house. So I'm like, okay. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I always try to find, like when I'm donating, I always try to think of the things that, you know, that I would want to eat exactly. and stuff like that. I mean, I don't, whoever gives and has a heart to give is wonderful, but I, I just see so many ramen noodles and I'm like, I'm just, <laughs> oh my gosh, let's like try and go outside of the scope. But I wanted to, one thing I wanted to point out was that, um, the township has been participating with American Bloom for the last couple of years. And the first year, they were they take a tour. These these advisors take a tour. It's it's a long story, but I'm getting to why when we were here doing a tour of ONTV, they had also done a tour of um, across the, when Forgotten Harvest oh. was here, and that was kind of a topic of conversation. They were like, "Holy cow, what is going on here?" And we started talking about you know here in in you know February we do the you know this food drive and then there's also forgotten harvest and then all these other things that we do and it's really interesting because we're used to it here and you talked about community and how everyone supports it and it's really funny to watch somebody from the outside see their um, perspective on it and see their 
we won a community vitality award because of how we support people mm -hmm. in terms of helping them with food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like it's very, uh, it, it, I know that a lot of places have this, but for some reason we outshone a lot of, like we do it really well here. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. that was a really mm -hmm. proud moment. Um, for us to get something like that. So it just goes to, uh, you know, everything that everyone does here to get ready for the food drive, what you all do there, Forgotten Harvest and all these other places that mm -hmm. are, you know, blessings in a backpack. They just did trivia night, all of that stuff. I mean, it was impressive. Yeah. They were so impressed with mm -hmm. the way that we take care of our community in terms of food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On one hand, you know, it's a shame that there's a need for this, but right. on the other hand, the Lake Warren community has always come through yeah. and, and has helped out when, when yeah. needed. Uh, as a matter of fact, I wanted to talk about your Adopt-A-Shelf program. Uh, you may have seen in the piece mm -hmm. that we rolled a little while ago, uh, the VFW uh, North Oakland Post uh, did a check presentation and they do that every year. What they do is they adopt a shelf, I think there are two shelves now that they adopt, and they'll present a check that will cover the stocking of that shelf for the entire year. Um, and they have the pasta and I think spaghetti sauce yep. shelf uh, area. Talk about your adopt a shelf program. It's basically that's what it is. People want to adopt a shelf, we ask them to make a donation, uh, and then um, we can buy the they can buy the food for the shelf or uh, the client or the person can come in and stock the shelves. A lot of people used to do it where they bring their kids in and yeah. stock the shelf on a Saturday or you know whatever day yeah. just to give the kids a little feeling for it. But um, that's very it's a very good way to donate and it's a way if, that people want to help. Yeah, It's a way that uh, they can do it. We have a couple of the, the adopt a shelf um, uh, cl uh, people at that, that issue a check and then um, then uh, through some of the programs either through uh, through Myers corporate I, I do some ordering so we mm -hmm. can get we can get things at a discounted price by ordering it through their corporate of 10 to 40 percent off so mm -hmm. I can able to use those funds to, sure. to purchase there and so I can get a larger quantity right. yeah. for that same amount of money right. yeah. and so it's a, it's a benefit of that way as well awesome oh, wow. so why don't you share your contact information whether someone needs your services or wants to volunteer their time, uh, how about giving out that contact information? They can just call Oxford Orion Fish and I don't know the number off my head, do you? 248-628-3933. Right, and they'll leave a message on the machine and the girls will call them and um, you know, and answer any questions they have or whatever they can do for them. That's awesome. Uh, anything you want to say to the Lake Orion community for supporting uh, your efforts? Just to thank them immensely for everything they've done for us. We couldn't, we wouldn't be here without them. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, and thank yeah. everybody that's going to participate into this particular uh, food drive food for drive. us. It's been a, a great boost, as as Joe mentioned earlier, at this time of year, where it enables us to use utilize those dollars and that food to restock our shelves for the uh, the rest of the winter months. Uh, we, again, as I mentioned earlier, it's the community that supports us and enables us to to feed people and that's that's what it's all about. Awesome. One thing right. I would like to mention is sure. that we also have started a program where we uh, bring snacks to the individual schools, grade schools through high school. So uh, they, uh, we buy snacks and they're bring, brought to the office and if the kids need something during the day, they can go to the office and, yes. and, and get a snack, you know, cheese and crackers or, yeah. you know, whatever, oh, healthy, healthy snacks. Right. <laughs> so yeah. granola bars, it's, it's amazing. I just would have never thought that was a necessity, but a lot of it's a big program. Yep. Yes, and it's yeah. going very That's well. Awesome. I was surprised to learn a number of years ago about the Blessings in a Backpack program and to find out that kids can get lunches mm. during the week at the school, but when they go home over the weekend, sometimes they might go the entire weekend without oh, being yeah. fed, and then they come back to school on Monday hungry, and that yeah. is so shocking to me. It's mm. amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. So, yeah. function yeah. if you're hungry. Yeah. Right, right, so. right. All right, well, thanks for joining us uh, today, and again, our, our food drive kicks off on Monday, but we're already starting to accept donations online. You can visit our website, uh, orionontv.org. There's a donate button on our website, and uh, so you can donate that way. You can stop in at our studio all next week to drop off uh, food donations or to drop off a check. Um, we'll take whatever you got all mm -hmm. next week. Help us break last year's record, and we'll deliver everything to fish 
uh, at the end of the week and uh, hope that we can help you get through these uh, next couple of months. Really appreciate it. Thank we you. We really Anna. thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Us. Yes, Thanks thank for you. Coming out. Uh, now here's a little musical segment from uh, the LO Live. That's the concert that uh, takes place in downtown Lake Orion throughout the summer. We have Alicia Mashili. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Right. Uh, <laughs> so enjoy this little musical segment. brings back memories of warmer days and oh, gazebo in downtown yeah. Lake Orion. Yeah. Uh, it's soon. the only thing that gets me through the snow is thinking <laughs> it'll all be gone soon. Soon. <laughs> uh, back in October, uh, we celebrate Community Media Day and we thought it would be fun uh, to, to, in celebration of that day to invite local nonprofit organizations that yeah. come into our studio uh, for what we called PSA Day. And so uh, we invited organizations to come in and sit right here where we're sitting and talk about their organizations. And we got a, a huge response That's and good. I put together uh, probably about a dozen or so uh, PSAs. And one of those organizations that took us up on it uh, was Love Inc., Love in the Name of Christ. Uh, they operate, if I, last time I checked, they operate out of the church that's on Drainer mm -hmm. in Oxford. That's where and I was the last time I was there. Yeah, so, yeah I think so. and so they basically coordinate uh, churches in the area to all sort of work together and help those in need. Uh, mm -hmm. So here's Love Inc.'s uh, PSA that they put together on Community Media Day. Hi, my name is Patricia Shapira and I am with Love in the Name of Christ of North Oakland County. This is our board chair, um, Denise Zook, Deshane, <laughs> or I don't know if I got that backwards. Don't worry. Um, and what, um, I'm with an organization that's been in around in the community since 2007. We've been around nationally as an affiliate um, 
since, I think it's been around 45 years. There are approximately 110 affiliates of Love Inks across the county, and our mission is to mobilize churches to transform lives and communities in the name of Christ. And what that looks like at our Oxford location um, on the campus of Lake Point Community Church is we have an office, what we call it a connection center, where when folks call us and they have a need, um, have it be for um, rent, utilities, food, they come in and we talk to them for about an hour to figure out exactly how they got into the position that they are and what we can do to help them get out of it. Um, as I said, we've been around since 2007 and we're really happy to be able to do our intakes in person. Um, we haven't always done that, but we thought if we wanted to be in relationship with people, that's one of the things that we need to do. Um, we also offer, um, as part of the transformational ministry, a clothes closet where people can go in once they've come into our office. And basically, we're all about transformation and self-sustainability, so we like to offer them um, options that they can choose so they can participate in getting out of the situation that they're in and part of that is a closed closet that we have at Oxford Free Methodist Church. We did have a bed blessings and beyond ministry that had household items but um, we're looking for another building about a thousand square feet because we're some plumbing issues in the current building. Um, we have probably 20 volunteers in our connection center so that includes um, receptionists and also intake volunteers who listen to the folks who call in um, Denise what else am I forgetting what, what <laughs> makes uh, what I'd like to you to stress is what makes love Inc successful like the fact when we do the intake look at um, the situation and make sure that we're giving them or helping them with the solution that gets them to a better place. Yeah, so we're not an organization that just gives a handout because we're not interested in that. We're, as I said, our mission is to help transform lives. And that's just to show folks, you know, what their God-given talents are to, to find out how they got in that situation and what we can do to help them help themselves. If um, you would like to help out or learn more about what, what we do, um, our phone number is 248-693-4357 or you can visit us on our website at loveinkofnoc.org. So Love Inc. doing some great stuff yeah. in the community. Uh, Denise Zook, who you saw on the right side of the screen, she's the immediate past president of the Lake Orion Lions Club. Yeah. And they're also doing amazing things in the community as well. You said you have uh, some experience with Love, Inc. What's, I do. Uh, what's your involvement I with do. them? I do. Well, they, they were pretty, when I was at the chamber, they were, you know, Patricia was really, really involved. Uh, and they did host a coffee, morning coffee thing at one point. And, uh, so that we could all get to understand what they what they do. Um, it just for me, I, I've gone to the you know the fashion shows that they've had. It's oh, just yeah. a outstanding uh, organization. F to you know personally, I like to go and support them. But um, I think Patricia's been doing an amazing job for the last couple of years, and they always have such good volunteer support, like really passionate people, and they do such good work. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and, uh, you know, we here at ONTV, we're a nonprofit organization, if you did not know that. Mm -hmm. And you don't necessarily have to wait until next October if you want to put together a promo like that to promote your nonprofit organization. We would love to have you come in. It mm -hmm. doesn't take much effort on my part at all for you to come in and, uh, and record something similar to promote your organization. We'd be happy to help. So, again, visit our website, orientontv.org, or give us a call um, to set something up. Uh, at your convenience. Uh, now we're going to segue over to sports. Lots happening uh, over at Lake Orion High School uh, when the weather is permitting. I know there's been a lot of uh, school closings over the past couple of weeks, but yes. uh, here's Joey Tysick to give you an update of what's happening with uh, Dragon Sports. Hello and welcome back to Lake Orion Sports Update. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, and today we are back as the winter sports season is in its final month as we give updates on boys and girls basketball along with hockey. The Lake Orion boys basketball team continues to have a great season. In the past two weeks, however, they did stumble just a little bit. They started by going to Lapeer and beating them 69-45, and unfortunately right after that, 
they dropped back-to-back -back road games against OAA white opponents. First, they lost 52-62 to Harper Woods, followed up by a 51-57 loss to Farmington. Both of those teams were struggling a bit coming into their matchups with Lake Orion. However, Lake Orion was able to bounce back when they played Troy Athens at home 50-32. Athens has a 10-4 record and sits second in the white division. Lake Orion has a favorable schedule to finish up the season, so we shall see what they can do as we reach the final month of the season. The varsity girls basketball team has also had a little bit of recent struggles as they faced off against their OAA Red opponents. They lost 27-74 to West Bloomfield, who are state title favorites this year. Then they had to go to Clarkson, where they lost 48-60. And finally, on January 25th, they lost 29-34 against Rochester. The Rochester loss was especially disappointing, seeing as the Dragons just couldn't get enough going on offense. The Lady Dragons now face a gauntlet to finish off their season, with the OAA Red being jam-packed with top teams. They will have to face undefeated Stony Creek twice, as well as see Clarkson and West Bloomfield again. The Lady Dragons can compete with these teams. They just need to continue to get better as they are still a young team. This final month will definitely test them. Good luck, ladies. The Dragons hockey team has had a tough season. There is no doubt about it, but they have been playing much better as of late. They lost seven games in a row before putting up 10 goals against Rochester United to win 10 to four. They then followed that game up by having back-to-back -back overtime losses to a good Saginaw Heritage team and a very tough Stony Creek team. The hockey team will now get a few rematches against M1 Unified, Rochester United, and Clarkston. I think that this team could actually be a sneaky team as they get into the playoffs because they've been hanging around in games lately. And if they can just tighten up their defense, they could have a shot to do something and salvage a tough season. For past episodes of the Sports Update, head on over to orionontv.org and click the ONTV On Demand link. There you will find all of ONTV's community programming, news, sports, concerts, and government meetings. You can also watch us on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV, all in HD. Just add the Cablecast channel to your lineup to enjoy local programming at its best. For even more Lake Orient sports, check out our YouTube channel for our full game coverage. Visit youtube.com and search for Orion Neighborhood Television. Also make sure to check all of our replays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, all at 7 p.m. We'll see you next time. So lots of exciting stuff happening at uh, Lake Orion High School, and uh, that'll go on for the next several months. Yep. Uh, you know, I mentioned a moment ago that uh, ONTV is a nonprofit organization, and uh, our funding primarily comes from cable revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, if you live here in Lake Orion and you have uh, Comcast or AT&T, uh, percentage of your bill, whatever that may be, goes to the township and the village, and then they, in turn, uh, give it to our cable commission, which then sets up our budget, and that's yep. how we operate as a, a nonprofit. And I don't think a lot of people are aware of that. I right. always have people ask all the time, uh, how is this possible? You know, because like when we charge, or when we have a class here, our fee that we charge is like 50 bucks. Like, how is that possible? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because of the cable revenue that comes in and supports us. Um, that money is currently being threatened. Yes, it is. And it's, uh, it's a daily ongoing battle to make sure that our elected officials uh, make sure that that funding continues. Yeah. Um, before you got involved in government, were you aware of how ONTV operated? Um, kind of on the surface, only because I'd always been interested in what you do here anyway. I think I was, you know, trying, and I, I tried to tell the story to Ian, and I think he just like, yeah, I don't remember it, but like I called years ago, and I was like, how do I become the next Rachel Ray at your <laughs> studio? And um, so I did kind of look into it a little bit, but it is, uh, it's, it, you know, it, it's interesting, and I only know more about it now because now I'm on the Cable Commission, and 
the checks come into my office and then we turn them right back around, which by the way, yeah. it came yesterday. Nice. Um, just saying. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a little bit more involved, but the thing is when you look at your cable bill, the peg fees, those PEG peg fees, they're not that much. Yeah. It's not like the, an individual person is paying an exorbitant amount in fees for this place. So, um, you know, I, I don't know the, the whole entire backstory, but Ian was kind of explaining it and I've been looking into it. It feels like, you know, somebody picked this bill up and kind of unnecessarily started it again without really understanding the repercussions and what yeah. would happen at a local level to these, these you know, uh, studios. But, um, you know, we've been doing what we can to, to support, you know, ONTV and the Cable Commission in Lansing. So everyone knows, mm -hmm. you know, you can't just go up to Lansing and make decisions on things without understanding what's going to happen to the people that are on the other end of that bill. I'm a little fired up about it too. So exactly. Just yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you mentioned the, the PEG uh, funds. When you look at your cable bill and you see PEG, that's not an additional charge on your bill. Basically what that is showing you is what percentage of your bill mm -hmm. is coming to ONTV. And so the cable companies, these poor cable companies who are facing financial hardship, they try to convince you that it's, it's yeah. costing you money. Whatever your bill is, whether it's $10 or $100, a percentage of that goes to the township of the village and in turn to ONTV. Um, the cable industry, including streaming and all mm -hmm. that stuff that's going on now, I had heard that they are slated to rake in 700 billion with a B dollars this year, yet they claim that providing that peg fee uh, is a burden to them. Um, and <laughs> our, our uh, lawmakers don't seem to understand what that money allows each community to do. Right. Um, now, our executive director here, Ian Locke, uh, we were sitting around talking one day and he said, you know, we promote a lot of local organizations, but we really don't promote what we do mm. here in the community. Now, a lot of you may see me out and about covering events and things like that, and we do try to be visible in the community. Um, but just recently I put together what we call the ONTV sizzle reel yes. to try and educate people on what it is we do here, uh, ONTV does here in the community. So let's take a look at that now. Orion Neighborhood Television is your community media outlet. Our mission is to empower community members and groups to create, communicate, and connect through television and video production. For more than 35 years, ONTV has offered video production classes to residents of all ages and provides them with the equipment and facilities to produce their own programs. Not only are residents encouraged to produce programs, but ONTV staff produces programs that promote local nonprofits and community groups like the Chamber of Commerce, the Orion Township Public Library, and the Lake Orion Lions Club, to name a few. The staff ventures out into the community to cover events like parades, festivals, concerts, and high school sports. ONTV has provided the equipment and staffing to televise township and village meetings live and has provided the video equipment that Lake Orion High School students use as they prepare for a career in broadcasting. ONTV's podcast studio and training give producers an opportunity to educate and entertain listeners. To sign up for classes or for more information, call 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org. So, like I said, we try to be visible in the community. Uh, we try to provide a lot of services to the community. Um, we have to go way back to the 90s, to the day when we first started televising uh, government meetings. Imagine not being able to watch your local mm -hmm. government on cable TV or uh, the internet. Uh, that's so important to a lot of people. And believe me, I know because if it doesn't work correctly, our phone rings <laughs> off the hook. Um, so those cable revenue uh, uh, dollars that we get allow us to do that. Yeah. Uh, the school board meetings, uh, to televise yeah. those. 
to educate students at the high school, uh, to record sporting events, to cover graduation. It's shocking to think that when I came out here yeah. in the mid-90s, uh, we weren't recording the high school graduation. Um, and we, we started doing that when I came out here and we've done it every year since then. Imagine losing all of those things because uh, the uh, cable companies want to take that It'd money be devastating. away. So It'd be devastating in ways that people maybe don't, don't think about. I mean, you know, it, it, just, just in terms of the, the, the things that you film, the government, um, t you know, two village, two township, two planning commission, two, like yeah. it's uh, invaluable. And, and I go back and look at that stuff. Other people do too. I just met with some people the other day who said, oh, there's something going on around my neighborhood. I went back and watched the planning commission meeting and now I understand it's important. It's, it's history. Yeah. It's the history of what's going on in our, Okay. Yeah. And you said off camera, up. you know, a lot of <laughs> careers are made here. A lot mm -hmm. of our former interns, you know, yep. they graduate from the high school's program. Some may go to Oakland University, some go away to college, uh, but they intern here and yeah. that turns into a career in broadcasting. Yes. And so we're here to help them as well. And you mentioned there's some big names that have come through public access. Uh, I used to work for um, TCI Cable and uh, the, we, our main office was in Royal Oak and somebody who utilized public access way back when was Tim Allen. Oh, and wow. that's why, you know, when you watch Home the Improvement, Tomia. there's right. so many references to the Detroit area. Yeah. And he got started in public access as a young stand-up comedian and that turned into a career. So, you know, we're, we're here to help the community. We're here for you. So if you want to find out how you can contact your local representative and uh, talk about why ONTV is important to you and to make sure that it could uh, be saved. Uh, you can again visit our website, orientontv.org, or give us a call here uh, to find out what you need to do. Uh, we're quickly running out of time. Before we go, uh, we'd love to give you an update of what's happening in the community. So here's Becky with uh, this week's Quick Hits. Join the Orient Library this Wednesday for Little It. Children ages 0 through 5 are invited for stories, songs, and activities that promote writing, singing, talking, and playing. The program has two sessions, one beginning at 10 o'clock and the other at 11. For more information, visit orientlibrary.org. The Great Teen Baking Challenge will be held at the library on Saturday from 1 to 2.30. The Great Teen Bake Off is the ultimate baking battle where amateur baking fans compete to be crowned the library's best amateur baker. This Bake Off is for students in grades 6 through 12. Please register at orionlibrary.org. ONTV's 14th annual food drive is just around the corner. The drive begins on Monday, February 5th and runs through Friday, February 9th. The food drive benefits the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry. Help us reach our goal of $6,000 by donating today at orionontv.org. Join Ascension for a Women and Heart Disease Seminar on Tuesday, February 6th. This free seminar will discuss what makes heart disease so deadly in women and ways to prevent it. The event will take place at the Orient Center from 2 to 3 p.m. Register at ascension.org slash events or call 248-844-4540 for more information. Well, it looks like we'll be staying dry for the week. Wednesday's forecast is calling for cloudy skies with a high of 39 and low 34. Cloudy again on Thursday with a high of 41 and low 28. Partly cloudy skies on Friday with a high of 35 and low 25. Partly cloudy on Saturday with a high of 37 and a low 25. And partly cloudy again on Sunday with a high of 37 and a low 27. Well, that's it for this week's ON TV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Hope it's not too miserable uh, this Saturday because the uh, Rotary Club has their ice, ice cup golf. golf. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be out there shooting video of that, and it usually gets really, really cold, so yes. I'm hoping for the best. Uh, so lots of stuff going on in Lake Orion, and uh, we hope that helped you out. Uh, any final thoughts before we wrap up? No, <laughs> I don't. Have a good week. Yeah, two weeks away from the Super Bowl. Looking forward to that. Mm. And uh, we will be back in two weeks, so uh, we will see you then. Got. Bye.